Hey guys, what's going on? Steve Cronin. Hello from Houston, Texas. Uh, I've been traveling here a couple days. You know, I've been living in New York City the past few months. Uh, had some things to take care of, so I came down here to do that. Um, it's a lot, you know, when I record on the streets of New York, there's people everywhere, and here there's like no one here. We got back there? No. Uh, so, yeah, I might sync up with Jack tomorrow, uh, you know, but I uh, just want to make a quick video. Uh, on the plane over, I was listening to a podcast, uh, Smart Drug Smarts with Jesse Lawler. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I frequently listen to, to podcasts and among other things about smart drugs and nootropics because, you know, I have a YouTube channel that talks about biohacking primarily about smart drugs and nootropics. So I like to check out and see what else is out there, what other commentaries are being run. And uh, so there was, was a podcast. Uh, Jesse did one on artificial intelligence. This has been huge, huge in conversations in, in the biohacking circles recently. Uh, and, you know, even when I went to Finland for the Biohacker Summit, we had some people talking about it there. Um, I wanted to bring something up, though, because there's a lot of discussion around <laughs> something that, to me, sounds like a very crazy concept, but there's actually some very, very serious, smart people, way smarter than me, that are talking about this, and that is uploading your, your consciousness to a machine. And I was thinking about them, like, how, how can this be? We don't even understand how consciousness works, what it's made of, how it's created. And here are all these people talking about how we're going to merge with machines and, and upload our consciousness into computers. What? It's like uh, that, that C-Lab 2021, I think, that episode where it's like, would you upload your brain into a robot body? <laughs> um, some, uh, you know. That was like 10 years ago I saw that, so maybe not everyone's going to get that. But uh, it finally hit me uh, that people who believe this are actually thinking in a very uh, materialistic sense. And, and, and I'm not saying that they're wrong. It occurred to me that not everyone thinks about the transpersonal realms, you know, in that way. And so here's the deal. We don't really know what consciousness is made of and how it works. Um, but materialism would say that consciousness is derived from matter and therefore um, everything that you have to do with consciousness and subjectivity comes from objectivity which makes you know that could be that could be that could be true that's possible that makes sense to me um, however also you have to think about that we only have correlative evidence linking subjectivity to objectivity right so when a brain is present <laughs> in the way that we think a brain is operating we're gonna have consciousness as well uh, you know, I saw Stanislav Grof, uh, uh, a psychologist, the founder of, or one of the founders of transpersonal psychology, uh, what, what I've studied in grad school. He had a talk last night um, at the Young Center here in the University of Houston. He made a pretty cool analogy that I think I've only heard once before and forgotten, and which is that when you have a television set that displays a picture, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the, the television set creates the picture. They're correlated together. You need the television to get the picture. And by the picture, I mean like what you watch, right? The, 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 the motion picture. Um, but if something's wrong with the signal, you're not going to study the TV at a molecular level, uh, Graf says, in order to figure out what's going on and figure out what's wrong. Um, what you are going to do, however, is check to see uh, how the signal is. Like maybe the connection and it needs to be tightened, that cable connection. Or maybe you need to call your cable provider to see what's going on. So there's a lot going on back there. And fixing the TV um, or, or taking the, the, the signal and uploading it to another TV is not going to work because you have something else that's causing the picture to appear. And you could think about consciousness in that way as well. So that's, that's also like could be possible, but, but that's just an idea, right? Uh, so something to think about as we move forward in biohacking. And, and you know, maybe in 50 years, when I'm, uh, when I'm 70, 78, um, we'll, we'll realize that maybe it is materialism and I'll upload my consciousness into a robot and I'll be like, okay, like I was wrong. And <laughs> but uh, just something to consider. It's just an ultimate, alternate perspective out there that maybe, maybe consciousness isn't derived from matter, but you need matter in order to have consciousness. Subtle, subtle distinction there, but, but as from this book I read, uh, how to, how to, I think it's called How to Win Friends and Influence People or something. I think this, I think this is what, no, maybe it was Star Trek. Well, one of those two things, Star Trek or that book, uh, where making distinctions, the finer distinctions you make is, uh, is, is something about, oh, the smarter you are. The more distinctions you can make, the smarter you are because you look at different things from many different ways. All right, guys, this video is getting way too long. <laughs> Uh, I got stuff to do. Uh, like, I got my haircut. Uh, all right, guys, take care, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Maybe, maybe with the live Q and A with Jack, depending on when this video posts. All right, take care.